morning. So, content, publishing, all that stuff. So, we know that content, uh, the publishing business is all about the right bait and the right content. So, Justin, we'll start with you. Infusionsoft, it's something that you guys have talked about. These days, what is the right bait for the, what is the right bait, the right content, and the right audience? Right, so this is something that I love talking about because it's what we do at Infusionsoft, you know, marketing automation. Um, and I can speak to how we've grown our practice at Infusionsoft as we've taken on venture capital and then also how our software enables our customers to do this. Um, you know, we marketers know that back in the day, everything used to be a shotgun approach, right? And we would use one message for the entire audience. Uh, and that just doesn't resonate with everybody in your audience. So it's not effective. Um, you're not able to see as many sales as you could had you used targeted content. Um, so as we've taken on $126 million in venture capital, we've been able to invest in those systems that allows us to make sure that we're using the right message at the right time for the right person. And in building a software that allows our small business customers to do this, the impact for them is huge. You know, we've seen great growth to 33,000 customers globally, 100 million revenue in sales. Mm. Um, but for our small businesses, the impact can be much more profound. Mm. So using our software and putting different content in different places that speaks to different customers, uh, our customers like Laura Rader, who owns a social media consulting business in the UK, was able to grow her list from 2,000 to 85,000. Her revenues from $100,000 to now over a million dollars. and. That, with, that with the right base, becoming the right content. With the yeah. right base and the right yeah. content. Okay. Jonathan, um, the evolution of media, you've seen it both um, in your previous vices and also as your role at Vox. Um, these days, though, from editorial to audience, where are the boundaries that, you'd, that you see now in, in, in the work that you do? Where are the boundaries, be it editorial or in audience? How has that developed over the last year or two? Yeah, so I guess what I've seen is that there really are no boundaries. Um, if you were to tell a media company five years ago that half of their traffic would be coming from mobile, that banner advertising would be uh, on a lifeline, and that social platforms and apps were starting to encroach on the home pages where people mm -hmm. discover uh, new things, they would probably just call you a crazy person and flog you, right? Um, and so, um, we, like whenever you take a step back and look at the past, 10 to 15 years, you can kind of break it up into three chapters of digital media. Mm. You kind of have this first chapter, uh, which was these premium media brands like the Condé Nast and yeah. the Hearst uh, porting their content and ad experience to the web, um, mm. which wasn't scalable. Um, you had a second phase, which was um, kind of a crappy phase, which was everybody was trying to scale as fast as possible, and mm. they were um, gaming algorithms and, the, and they're arbitraging traffic and they were doing black hat SEO tactics and they were doing you know clickbait content um, and it wasn't sustainable and it didn't really build brands and I think now what we've seen we're in this phase um, where brands actually matter again um, mm. where we've proven that premium content really kind of smart digital voices when powered with smart technology and distribution capabilities and uh, a data-informed approach to content creation can build premium brands and mm. that substance can be viral. Mm. So you mentioned mobile, Dan, Telefonica, and it's something that you have spoken about, mobile marketing excellence, right? And I'm curious about the use of that phrase particularly. Right now, at Telefonica, what does mobile marketing excellence mean to you? Jonathan's made the point that it's become so important. So how do you achieve that excellence then? Sure, I mean, it's... Um it's a, it's a really exciting time, actually, um, to, be work, to be working in this space you know, where technology um, meets advertising. And I think you know, from a Telefonica perspective, I think there are kind of three things that, that we think are, are key to mobile advertising excellence, mobile marketing excellence. One is understanding some of the utility, utility sides of what customers want, right? So content is super important, but also utility in order to um, get them on board there and I think that so what we're talking about there is things like is understanding that connectivity is the new need so mm. the actual your actual data the your connectivity that you have from us so for example some so for us it's the ability for brands to be able to incentivize and encourage customers to use more data but potentially without having to pay for it and asking brands to play a part in almost 
subsidizing that content that they're consuming because they're doing it in more and more, in more, and more ways. That's the first thing. The second thing is around um, off the quality of the data, right? We're right. all talking about great ways that data can help create relevancy, um, can help um, make a great experience for users, right? And, and if, if users don't have a great experience, then they'll just turn off from advertising completely. So um, making authenticated data is the key. And mm -hmm. I think the best quality data is the kind of data that is authenticated by a billing relationship. Obviously, we're, we're at our heart a telco, so we yeah. understand a, a lot of stuff. So we can help do that. And the third thing I think, that, it, and the, a, a very key part to, to, that, to mobile marketing excellence, as I, I guess, is around the creativity, and we're only just starting to see um, what can really happen with creativity on mobile, understanding the different data and insights that brands and the creative community can get on you, um, mm. and all of, the, all of the different sensors that, 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 that are feeding in, like, like location, like demographic data, mm. all of this to be able to serve you the right content at the right place at the right time. I mean, something we've been looking at is, you know, um, there, there is a section within Telefonica which can understand and has conducted a study around boredom and mood state to understand what kind of a mood you might be in at a certain time to, to, to provide you. So therefore, and it's also proven, I think that you're 43% more likely to be receptive to content because you're bored, kind of makes sense, right? But if you can identify that, then there's a great opportunity to connect with people at the right time with the most relevant content. Okay, so uh, to take the content back to Justin then for a minute. And so mobile, we know it's so important and it's affected all of your businesses radically over the last 12, 18 months. Justin, from demographics to the size of the audience, where they are, what are infusions, how are you managing to address the whole mobile problem? Well, I say mobile problem because in a sense, desktop, yeah, whatever, you know, uh, it's about mobile for you, presumably. It is, yeah, and you're totally right, Andy. Uh, desktop is definitely fading. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's no secret that mobile is, is the new standard. So in FusionSoft, you know, we have a mobile app that allows our small business customers to receive the benefits of the software while they're on the road, you know, conducting business. Uh, we're releasing a mobile payment solution very soon as well. Um, but it's, it's definitely a challenge. Yeah. And we've been investing quite a lot of dollars into making our product more mobile friendly so that users can see more of that value. And for companies who are perhaps catching up to this yeah. new standard, it's very important to understand where and how your users are engaging with you over mobile so that you can focus on, on investing there. Um, for instance, we know that a lot of our users uh, don't interact with us on Facebook. You know, that's, that's not a good acquisition channel for us. Mm. Um, you know, so instead, we invest the dollars elsewhere into developing more mobile products and then using Facebook to create a community for our users, our partner resellers, and small businesses all over the globe. Okay, so to move on on mobile, and this one really for Jonathan initially. Jonathan, uh, it's about more than the size of the connected audience, though. And so, so much mobile, but we have this huge connected audience. And we're talking about automation in this industry. Can we automate something w that is so subjective? So how important are things like relevancy and trust in growing the Vox reach? And is it possible to automate such a subjective topic as, uh, a, as an editorial topic? Yeah, so I think you're right. I think, you know, Maybe a few years back, it was all about how fast you can scale and how big you can get. And that's still, I guess, kind of important. But mm. what's more important to us now is the quality and the composition of that audience. Um, you know, at Vox Media, we're now at about 170 million unique visitors every single month across all of our properties. And that's great, but I don't care about that if these are people that are flybys, if these are people that um, are not in markets that I'm activating. I don't care if these are people that are 40 and still living at home with their parents. Like, those aren't important to me. Like, what we see by looking at uh, Comscore and Facebook Insights is that throughout all of our properties, we over-index for attributes that you might consider smart uh, or affluent. So high purchase power mm -hmm. and um, higher education. That's kind of a thing that's a through line throughout all of our properties. Mm -hmm. And so that's the kind of audience that um, you know, we work to try to um, attract uh, to our properties and it's the people that we employ to build our brands. Um, and so, you know, do I think that there's a world where, uh, you know, content is automated? You've seen, ex uh, I mean, you've seen examples of this in the past and uh, it, it, it hasn't really turned out mm. the way that I think a lot of people intend them to be. 
Um, you know, there's a reason why media brands like the New York Times or Der Spiegel or uh, The Guardian or The Wall Street Journal have been around for decades and decades yeah. and decades. It's because they have prioritized their brand and their voice above everything else. Yeah. Okay, so that brings me on, Dan, right? So Jonathan's point there about uh, big media brands having been around. So that editorial touch uh, exists and, and is crucial to how brands develop. So on, I'd say on Telefonica platforms, native advertising versus that editorial touch, how are you guys kind of, uh, well, does, for an organization as large as Telefonica, are you guys thinking about machine learning? Are you, uh, are you putting algorithms in place to address the marketing? Or in the post-truth era, are you still thinking, oh, actually, native advertising, yeah, it's, it, it can't do everything we want. We need an editorial touch on this. Certainly, I mean, for us, um, no, we've, we've already certainly embraced programmatic, and you know, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an absolutely key thing. I think that as media itself is moving from buying channels mm. to buying audience, you know, to buying me, you know, I, I, think, I think it's very important that now that programmatics bought us that, I think moving to the, the programmatic side is key. Um, we have a, a platform that we invested in um, called Axonic, so um, that's where our authenticated data feeds into the market and we're setting up trials um, in parts of Europe and Latin America at the moment to give brands the opportunity to utilize Telefonica to um, enrich some of the advertising campaigns that they're running there. And I, I think the key thing is in, ter in terms of the um, the key thing that it brings in terms of the programmatic, you know, I think mm. where, whereas, uh, whereas before it was just we made the shift from buying channels to buying audience, with programmatic in, in you know, the age of context, you know, which I'm, I was speaking about later on, which were, you know, the, written by um, Shell Israel and Robert Scoble, you know, that great book, understanding the different sensors and the information that you have now, there's a real opportunity to actually uh, to get things so personalized if we understand so much contextual data mm. about you at any given mm. moment, then we're not so much targeting you, but we're almost communicating with you, interacting with you. And creating think, a better picture. Yeah, creating a better picture and just, and just creating that relevancy. So I, I, think, I think that's a key thing. And I think going back to, I think that some creatives are doing it really well at the moment. You know, there's a fantastic, I noticed a, a Unilever case study at the moment using th this, this dynamic content creation. Um, I think they had a hundred, uh, uh, I think it was Unilever Acts, they had a hundred thousand different versions of the Romeo and Juliet story that they delivered to you without you knowing it. Um, <laughs> they delivered you a different version of it depending on who you are and your profile and where you are. And uh, you know, there's not that many case studies like that around. So I think w where you're, you're literally just starting to scratch the surface now, I think, about how really strong creative and really strong messages can use all the data to deliver the most relevant content. Justin, just to continue that point, is that what you guys are looking at now on your platform? Is that the way you're starting to build out, yeah? Yeah, so ma machine learning is a huge opportunity for us. Um, you know, small business customers are juggling a lot of different things when they're starting a small business, and that's what our software helps to aim relieve. Uh, you know, so in, instead of getting a CRM and then getting MailChimp to power their email and yeah. then getting Shopify to power their e-commerce, right? We're able to take all of that and put it into one system. So one of the things that we're focusing on right now is investing in whether or not we're able to create some machine learning to help provide insights to our small business customers mm -hmm. to say, hey, we recognize that there's opportunity here or we realize that you haven't been following up with this person. Perhaps you should use this campaign for people who purchase this kind of product. So there's definitely a huge opportunity there, um, especially for small businesses. Mm. Jonathan, just generally, so yeah. over the next year, right, we've, we've listened to what Vox have been doing this year and, and, and the growth. Where do you think the biggest growth area for Vox will be in this area, the stuff that you can automate and automating as much of this process as possible? Yeah. St still on video or the same platform or other well, I mean, content? Yeah, so obviously video. Yeah. Um, you know, video is uh, a very important um, source of investment for us now and through 2016. Um, you know, we think about video kind of in two different tracks. Um, there's the track that is, you know, high quality, um, episodic, long form made for OTT platforms yeah. or VOD. And then there's um, content that still, retain, uh, still retains a lot of our 
um, you know, editorial voice and credibility in our approach to content creation that lives on uh, platforms like Facebook and YouTube uh, and our uh, player um, on our website. Um, you know, just to tack on to what you were saying uh, about kind of automation, like the way that we think about that um, at Vox Media um, is less about something that dictates the content that's created, but something that actually informs and amplifies the content okay. that the people that are our editors create. And so um, the thing that actually powers a lot of our editorial voices uh, is a platform that we've created come in house called Chorus. And Chorus um, allows us to do things like um, multivariate test 9,000 different keyword combinations with, uh, <coughs> sorry, oh, with images. You gotta actually figure out how uh, sorry, uh, uh, I'd actually figure out which combination come kind of elicits the highest click and engagement and shares. Right. Uh, it allows us to um, cross pollinate content between all of our platforms. Uh, yeah. It allows us to um, kind of serve up uh, keywords that are really relevant in the news cycle that day based on volume uh, and to kind of give our editors a better sense of the things that they can be writing mm. about rather mm. than the things that they should be writing okay. about. And so speed to publication, Dan, from your perspective, so that's an interesting thing, and, and the, the craving for content. Speed to publication, is that what automation is simply helping you with? Um, I, think, you know, I think for us, it's, it's, um, speed is definitely about important. For us, it's about just making it easier for, for advertisers to be able to, enri to enrich their campaigns and get it to market quickly. With currency. Certainly, yeah. I mean, I, I think I think that's it, it's it's very very important speed to market. I mm. think that the role that we can play is by removing the barriers in that. So to be using our authenticated data to be able to in, um, to be able to elevate and sort of empower the level of campaigns, and also from to unlock connectivity to be mm. able to incentivize consumers to to um, to interact with content or in advertising without having to worry about their data package. You know, mm. that, that's mm. what we're talking about here, mm. to be able to, um, you know, the, the, I think we've all seen the sort of meteoric growth of, of video consumption. That's only going to go one way, right? That's only getting bigger and bigger. And things like, um, things like the, the sponsored data product that we've just launched, to be able to unblock that and allow brands to pay for that data as opposed to consumers, we think it will um, free up consumers and also um, really um, allow brands to engage consumers in a, in a much stronger way. Okay. And Justin, finally, just uh, from your perspective and over the next year and the growth that you're likely to see, Jonathan and Dan, the, the video focus, automating it for you guys, is that something that you'll be able to do over the next year, keeping currency and pub speed to publication? The, the inclusion of video? Yeah. You mean in automation? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, currently our users can, can embed or link to videos in, in automated campaigns. Um, you know, for us, automation is is just paving the way to free up some time in our small business owners' days. Right. And when we talk about automating all these subjective processes, we've noticed that it really isn't that subjective. Mm. You know, it's it's mm. the the formula for going on a first date is very much the same, right? The outcome may be different, <laughs> um, but you yeah. you still start to get to know each other, uh, go through the paces, ask the right questions, yeah. and and if it works out, great. If not, that's fine. Um, but that's something that we've noticed. You know, the, the formula for life cycle marketing, especially for our customers, is largely the same. So for us, it's more so a challenge of how do we educate our customers on these are the best practices or this is the framework that you should use. Machine learning and dating advice from Justin Topliff. Justin, Jonathan, Dan, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.